Hey everybody, Ronroy here. In 3.25, Mina received a huge buff, and Slam playstyle benefited enormously from it. Slams received an increase in damage effectiveness for the direct damage increase, and now the exerted attacks also very easy to stack with the new support gems. On top of that, GGG added a new gem, Overextortion, which aimed to boost Slam's potential even higher. The Chieftain Ascendancy also received an easier access to infinite Warcry power, on top of free 7 link support that it already had. So right now Chieftain is a great option to play slams. Here is my in-depth guide for slam based league starter. This build is pretty flexible, and you will be able to use it with many physical slams or even pick a different ascendancy. We are going to start with Sunder, but you can change the skill after the campaign if you wish so. Click on the dedicated timestamps here if you're interested in particular skill, and I'm going to cover the ones that will work best in my opinion. Let's go! So why Warcry and Slams work so well together? It is mostly because attack speed of the Slams is not highest, so it can match Warcry cooldown, and they deal more damage per hit, that way we can exert our hard-hitting bongs to raise the damage even further. It leads us to the next question, how good is the new support over extension? can give us at least 18% more damage for each Warcry exerting our attack, which is absolutely amazing in terms of damage. That way, since we have around 6 Warcrys in our current build setup, and 4 of them are automated, we can receive 118% of more damage, which is absolutely insane, because it provides just a pure multiplier. And usually our support gems can provide like uh, from 30 to 50% of additional damage. But right here we have double that, which is absolutely amazing. It leads us to another cool thing that we can use for our slam builds. It's Ikas of Creation Royal Burgonet. That's a helmet that's going to give us more damage for each Warcry exerting our attack again. And since we're using 6 Warcrys, it will be around 78% of more damage just from that helmet, which is absolutely insane too. The only thing that we need to keep in mind is that we are going to receive from 15-20% to 20 of our life as physical damage for each Warcry, which could be a little harder. However, we have a pretty decent armor and physical damage mitigation, and overall we should be alright. If you can't use the helmet for some reason, you can just drop it out if it will be hard for you to handle at some point. So, how many Warcrys we are going to use in our build? Generally, I have 6 Warcrys in the build right now. There's a possibility that we can add one more, however, I don't think it's necessary, and it will lead to more mana problems. And build itself is not so piano, because we can use 4 Warcrys automatically. We are going to use auto exertion new gem, which is going to use all of our war cries automatically for us. So Intimidating, Battle Mage, Inferno and Rolling Cry are automated in that build. And there's two more war cries that we will need to use manually. So manually we are going to use Seismic Cry and Enduring Cry. Enduring Cry is here to provide crazy life regeneration. We are going to receive about a thousand life regeneration just from Enduring Cry with all the buffs. So it's absolutely insane, and I think it's definitely worth using it. And Seismic Cry is going to provide additional armor. It can provide up to 6k armor, and I think it's pretty much a decent number. It also provides an additional area of effect, however, it could be automated. And we're mostly using it just for the armor. I don't think that more buffs like that are necessary, and Seismic and Enduring will be pretty much all what you need to use. One pretty important part that works currently for all war cries is pretty much how we can make better cooldowns. So right now quality provides 40% increased cooldown recovery rate for all cooldowns. So if you are playing a war cry build, we will need to make sure that all our war cries have quality because it's going to rise uptime significantly. So as far as you will be able to get the gems, just make sure that all your cries have maximum quality in all cases. So another interesting question, what skill are we going to level with? I think right now the best leveling skill would be Thunder, because Thunder can provide a pretty decent AoE and a very decent damage too. 
it's also going to hit enemies with both main wave and little shock waves too, and it's going to help at least a little with the Cleo. Thunder is available from level 12, and you will be able to start using it very early. In the late game, you will be able to pick different skills. However, I recommend to at least finish campaign with Thunder, because I think it's going to just feel very good. So, the most important war cry that you should use while leveling is pretty much Seismic Cry. Seismic Cry is going to provide you with both armor and area of effect. The most important part is always area of effect because it's going to boost your clear significantly. So, you will need to use at least Seismic Cry while you're running through the campaign, but if on top of that you can use Enduring Cry, that would be good because it's going to provide you with life regeneration and your build is going to feel better. Make sure to use urgent orders if you feel like Warcry's speed is not fast enough. So, another great question is which ascendancy we can pick. Generally, we have three ascendancies to choose from. So, Juggernaut, Berserker, and Chieftain. All of them are kinda alright. Let's start with the Juggernaut. I think Juggernaut not really bringing a lot to the table. We don't need Undeniable, because increased attack speed per accuracy is not what we currently need there. And it can provide endurance charges and survivability. We don't really focus on endurance charges if we're not playing some consuming endurance charges builds, and I think it's pretty much alright right now. And survivability is nice, however, we already have enough for it. So I would move to two other options. Both Berserker and Chieftain is absolutely amazing. For the Berserker, we are receiving new options such as Warbringer or Warcry's exert twice as many attacks which is very strong, to be honest. Another cool buff is uh, just like Aspect of Carnage, is 40% of more damage. And New Rage can help us a lot since we are stacking it here and there, so Rage part of the Berserker could be very good. However, Berserker is going to have less survivability, and in my opinion it's not really worth it because damage of the build is already enough. However, if you are ready to trade your survivability for more damage, Definitely go Berserker, because Warbringer and Aspect of Carnage are going to carry you forward. So just take Berserker and leave every scene in the build the same. Talking about the Chieftain, we are receiving to Kahamovar's Herald, which can give us about 35% of additional damage, which is nice. We are receiving Warcrys have infinite power, which is very cool too, we can stack a lot of life regeneration and armor that way, even if we are manually using only two Warcrys. And the last part is Valaka Storm Embrace, together with Tassalio, I think both of those buffs can help us a lot with pretty much managing our resistances early on, and getting more maximum resistances are pretty cool thing as well, because I think it's going to rise survivability. So I'm going to play Chieftain mostly because of the Tukahama, Infinite Power and Valakas. However, if you prefer more damage, go Berserker. If you prefer balance choice, go Chieftain, and if you prefer more tankiness, go Juggernaut. Talking about regeneration, right now in the late version of the build I have 1100 life regeneration per second, together with 800 life leech on hit rate too, and I think the whole regeneration of the build is going to be insanely high. We can also add a master recover 15% of life when you use a war cry. I currently don't have it for 95 level version, however we can pick it later on. And I'm sure that it's going to feel amazing, because you will be able to regenerate huge chunks of life constantly while doing almost nothing. However, keep in mind that recover 15% of life when you use a Warcry Mastery, working only with Warcry that you cast yourself, so if they are automated, you're not going to receive 15% of life period. Talking about mana issues, mana being raised in terms of how much skills are required to pretty much cast itself. So right now we have a few interesting techniques at a little higher levels to pretty much counter it. So at level 31, you will need to use Clarity and Cannibalistic Right. Cannibalistic Right is going to give you 15% reduced mana cost of attacks, together with attack cost uh, life instead of 10% of mana, so that's 25% of less mana cost. Together with two little nodes for 8 and 8 here, it's going to help you tremendously with mana cost early on. You can also take a mana mastery for regenerate 5 mana per second. It's going to help you a little with mana regeneration. So while moving forward, around level 
54, we will need even more mana regeneration because we will spend much more mana again. And I recommend to go for Spirit of War. Spirit of War can give you 0.5% of physical attack damage to leech this mana. Together with 15% reduced mana cost of attacks. It's a pretty cool bonus and it's going to keep you afloat in terms of mana. However, you need to stop sometimes and stop casting. Moving forward, at level 75, you will be able to drop both of those and pretty much go for a life and mana leech. Life and mana leech is going to provide you with life and mana leech, as pretty much is in the name, and you're going to regenerate and leech enough mana to pretty much cast constantly. And the last part is pretty much level 95, and level 95 I recommend to drop life and mana leech passives here and just go for cluster. In cluster you can get Feed the Fury together with Fuel the Fight. They are going to provide you with mana regeneration and life regeneration. So those could be a little harder to come by, so in that case just use level 91 setup without the cluster while you still have life and mana leech passive in there. So with all of that you should feel kinda alright in terms of mana, however if it will feel too bad in some particular cases. You can always use your last measure, which is like that. You are regenerating crazy amount of health, so if you feel like you can't, completely can't have enough mana, just get the life tap in and play a little with it. Another important question is pretty much where we are getting our charges. So endurance charges are so easy to get right now, because we are using Enduring Cry, and Enduring Cry, because we are using it manually, is going to provide us with Endurance Charges every time that we are using it, because we have a pretty decent setup here. So, another important part, so, to get maximum Frenzy Charges, you will be able to get those only in late part of the game, because you will need to have a Cluster Jewels for it. In the Cluster Jewels, you have a mob mentality. It's pretty much give 5% chance to grant an endurance frenzy or power charge per power. Since we have a pretty decent amount of power, the chance is going to be pretty high. That way we can just constantly get frenzy charges and the build should fail a little faster because of it. However, earlier we just don't have any ways to get frenzies, so you can completely ignore them. But you will be able to get endurance charges in almost all setups just by using Enduring Cry. So, another pretty important question is how to get fortified. We currently have two options. So, one would be to go for Steadfast and to go for Master Melee Hits Fortified. However, the whole build is very points hungry. So, I wouldn't recommend to go there. Instead, I think it will be much easier if you will just use Fortified Jump. So, keep using it from the moment when you will get like 5 link and you will constantly have Fortify on yourself and you'll survive significantly better. So right now, I also want to mention other skills. As I already told you, the whole build is pretty flexible, and you can use different skills in the endgame. So here in the loadouts, you will be able to see setups for Earth Shatter, Ground Slam, and Earthquake, because you don't need to change much. So first one is Earth Shatter. For Earth Shatter, we will have less damage for initial impact, but we will be able to get additional damage from spikes. Spikes are going to blow up constantly, because we are always screaming with war cries, and war cries are blowing spikes. So if you prefer Earth Shatter, you don't need to change a lot of stuff, you can just change the loadout, and pretty much just play the Earth Shatter. I think the whole build will work just perfectly with that. Second option is Ground Slam. The Ground Slam is very awesome. However, you will need to stay pretty close to the target, because you will deal like 69% uh, more damage with hits to close the targets, and that's definitely nice. So, another one important part, you need to click close range right here in your configuration. The damage will not be much higher, but it has potential for sure. And the last skill that we can use is pretty much Aerosquake. Aerosquake is going to provide us with initial impact and aftershock. Aftershock itself is a pretty big number by itself, but I think Earthquake is pretty much for the Bleed builds right now. I would recommend to go and play Bleed Earthquake instead, because I think it just has much more potential. However, if you just love big 
uh, strong hits, you can definitely just play Earthquake. So out of them all, I still recommend basically to just play Sunder, because Sunder is a very strong skill. Um, it's definitely going to be one of the best ones. And second option, I would go for Earth Shatter. So Earth Shatter or Sunder probably would be the best option in the current setup. However, feel free to use Path of Building as you like. So there's also a pretty pressing question. What about other skills, such as Consecrated Path or Volcanic Fisher, for example? So there is a big issue. Those skills are pretty much moving part of your physical damage to fire damage. And it pretty much leads to a different approach for the whole build. I do not recommend them to use it with my setup. Because since they're going to use some physical to fire, you will lose damage. So please use only the skills that I currently recommend in the loadouts. Everything else is not working that good and will require a different build. Another pretty important question for all slam builds. Which attack speed is going to be comfortable for the build? So generally, I recommend to go for at least 0.60 of second spare attack, because it will feel much more comfortable. You can go lower, or you can go a little higher, however, staying closer to that number is going to feel much better. Don't drop your attack speed lower per one attack per second, because it's going to just feel horrible on Gi. So don't do that, even if it would feel beneficial in some cases. It pretty much leads us to a question, what good sources of attack speed we have? So generally, the main source is Wrecking Ball, because you will be able to get at least 10% on there. Don't take in the mastery, don't take attack speed 200 weapon, deal 60% increased damage, but 10% reduced attack speed. It's definitely not worth it. Even if it provides some damage, it will feel horrible in game, so please don't take it. Go instead for 40%, but without any penalty for attack speed. On top of that, you can also get additional attack speed across the tree during your leveling process. And in later part, I recommend to just go for Cluster Jewel for it. So Martial Prowess, for example, give you 6%, Feed the Fury can provide you 15% increase of attack speed while leeching, or Fuse the Fight can provide you 8% of attack speed. And it would be pretty helpful. Earlier versions, such as level 75, you will be able to get that speed here at Slaughter, for example. It's not a lot, but it will be enough for your build to feel much better. So right now I also wanted to explain the level process. We are going to feel much better after we will get the Sunder, and we are going to get the Sunder right after we will be able to discover Mervia location. So around level 12, you should be able to play with Sunder already. So the first step is just to King Ground Slam as your reward, because gra Ground Slam is a pretty decent skill that you will be able to progress with. After that, you also will need to try to buy 200 weapon, because 200 weapon is going to help you at the start, so get 200 mace or 200 axe. After Mercy Mission, you also will need to get chance to bleed support, because it's a very good support for start of the game. At the Caged Brute, you will be able to get added fire damage support which is going to be your second support, leaving you with chance to bleed, added fire damage, and ground slam, that later you are going to repick with Sundar. So with Brutus setup, you don't need a lot of stuff, and can basically just fight it with ground slam. For Siren Cadence, you will be able to pick Sundar, and it will happen right after you have found the location of Meryl. So perfectly, you will need to fight Meryl with Sundar already. So right now, I want also to showcase you how to use Path of Building loadouts. It's a new cool feature that you can use here to just change all the parts simultaneously. Just choose the proper setup, such as Earth Shatter, for example, or Ground Slam, or Earthquake, anything will work. You can also look for the whole setups during the leveling process too. So first off, uh, I already showcased the Brutus setup and Marvel one. I'm going to showcase the first Ascendancy, and in the first Ascendancy we're just getting Sion, Sansa War, for Warcry's infinite power. It's not too important, but we can start using Warcry's pretty soon. I also recommend to go and get two Rage on Hit with Access as fast as possible, because it's going to make your whole leveling experience much smoother. Next part is Resolute Technique, and you need to go and try to get it as fast as possible too, because you will 
start missing at some point. Uh, it will be harder to hit because you don't have enough hit chance and the resolute technique is going to protect you from it. Since you can't crit often enough anyway, it's definitely going to feel better. Another important part, at level 37, I recommend to take Soul of Steel, so taking armor elemental resistances here, just to fix your resistances at least a little. Also, barbarism can help with that too, and it's a pretty nice part. So for level 45, you will need to go here and get physical attack damage leached as mana, because it's going to help you with your mana management. Cannibalistic right by itself will not be enough. At level 54, you will be able to take more X knots. Just make sure that you always use a big 200 X for better results. I also recommend to go for battle trends to get some rage, because rage is going to be an amazing damage multiplier in that league. So moving forward, at level 65, you're receiving 3rd Ascendancy and Stukahama Wars Herald. It's going to make your mana situation a little worse, because your skill is going to be su supported by Feast of War, and it will be a little harder to manage mana, but I think you can manage because you already have Spirit of War, for example. I also recommend to go down there and take Vengeance. Vengeance absolutely amazing in terms of providing armor. It can give you a lot, and it's going to protect you significantly if you have rage. So just try to hit enemies often enough, because you're going to receive two rage from passives here, one rage from slaughter, and one rage from passive here. So it's going to work just perfectly. After that, at level 75, and when you will be able to get to early maps, I recommend to get Wrecking Ball, and you can also mandle this Bastion Breaker, it's not a bad knot, it's going to help you early on, before you will be able to get a very good weapon. You also can go to the right and just switch to life and mana leech, that way you will have both life and mana leech at the same time. Getting Admonisher is a very good help, because that way you will be able to cast Warcry much faster, and you will not stop consistently to pretty much cast your Enduring Cry, for example. So it's a very good part. You also will need to get maximum resistances here, and re-pick the fire resistance, if it's possible, because with Balaka you are going to raise your all resistances with it. At later maps, you will be able to take some parts of suppression here, add more masteries, and finally take that part. That part is going to provide you like nat natural authority, is going to provide you with Warcry buff effect, giving you armor and life regeneration. Escalation by itself is going to give you damage, which is kinda nice too. And last part is level 95. Here you will be able to add a cluster jewel, I recommend to just go for Feeds of Fury, Fuel the Fight and Martial Proofs, as I already mentioned. And the most important part is small cluster jewel for warning call and mob mentality. Warning Call is going to give you so much armor. So there's like two peels of your whole armor set. So that's like a red one, Warning Call, and that's like a blue one, Vengeance. And you can have both of them at the same time. So make sure you're getting them. After you will get Mob Mentality, I also recommend to get Savagery, because Frenzy Chargers are always good, and you will have a pretty decent uptime. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. Don't forget to take Warcrys cannot exert travel skills. Otherwise, it could feel a little strange for you to leave slamming around. And Warcrys debilitate enemies for one second. It's another great way to survive better. So try to get it as fast as possible too. That's pretty much been a leveling setup. And if you will follow it just fine, you're going to scale into maps without any kind of issue. Your first choice a chasing item is pretty much Ecos of Creation. As you can read here, use Rare Helmet, not Day 1 option. You probably will be unable to buy Ecos of Creation on Day 1. So if you will progress fast and there will be no Ecos of Creation on market, just don't use it. Just use a Rare Helmet instead. I don't have added modifier for Ecos of Creation in terms of damage. Because right now I'm not sure if you even will have it. So that's pretty much it. However, try to buy it as fast as some of them will be available. 
So another important question is how calculate the damage of the build. To calculate the damage, as you can see, I have five links in almost all my setups because last gem is going to be over extortion. In calculation and configuration, you will need to add over extortion support gem from six war rights. It's going to be 108% more damage because you are receiving 18% per each war cry. You have six of them and you're also receiving 10% of more damage just by itself. So in the end, you're receiving 108% of more damage. You can just add a custom modifier. Please delete it after POB will update and will add the gem to the whole calculation system and you will be able to just add the gem here. For now, while we don't have it, we have that custom modifier here. It's also pretty important to notice that I'm not using the banner here. I decided, since banner is not really here that often, I decided not to use it. So if you will add it right here, it's going to boost your damage. It's going to add like 20 or something percent of damage. However, I think banner here is just like maybe 10% of the time. So I'm not adding it to the calculation. I'm still adding Bizork because I think Bizork is going to have a pretty decent uptime, maybe not crazy one, but a pretty decent one. So I think slams are eating so good this league, together with a whole other melee setup. I think with all changes to war cries, we will be able to automate most of them and only click two for cool buffs. And with all that, the whole build looks really promising. Just pick the skills that you like and I hope you will have a pretty cool league star. Thank you very much for watching, please subscribe for more RPG content and see you next time.